Hey everybody, it's Tony Ceballos, and this is an exciting day for me because I get to talk with a fellow author, and you know how much I enjoy bringing fellow authors before you uh, to sharpen us and to encourage us and, and, and confront us in a loving and challenging way to, to do more, aspire to do more. And uh, today is, is, is absolutely in that category. I'm so excited to bring to you fellow author Mark Schinnerer. And Mark is joining us this morning from New Mexico. And Mark has a fantastic book with a fantastic premise I want to bring to all of you. So first of all, Mark, good morning. And uh, thank you for joining me. I really morning, appreciate it. Morning, Tony. Um, I, I have a question for you. Um, and, and I know your answer, so all transparency, but I really want to just state the obvious here okay. uh, because you wrote a book called The Success Grower, which right. I love that title. And your field of expertise is setting goals, goal accomplishment. So let's start right here, Mark, okay? If I have the philosophy that I'm just gonna let life happen, okay? Mark is just letting life happen, the right path to success. <laughs> Well, and so I guess I would ask back a question. Are you where you want to be in your life based on where you've come from, what's happened? Are you where you want to be? The struggle is most people don't know where they want to end up in their life. And in fact, most people don't even plan for where they want to end up in their life. And that's kind of the whole premise to the book. Most people live their life and I, I call it, you live on someday aisle, you know, like an island, someday aisle, someday I'll start that business, someday I'll make $100,000, someday I'll win the lottery, whatever. And that's where they live their life. And they get to the end of their life and, and they, they wonder what happened instead of actually deciding how it was going to happen. And so they end up just letting life happen and they get to the end of their life and they, they have nothing, they have regrets, they, they have no challenges. So each person has to answer the question, what is success for you? And so many times when we talk about being successful, we think of a lot of money and a nice house and nice cars, but that's okay. But it could mean you want a happy family life. It could be you want to have a healthy marriage or just a healthy life. Um, maybe you want to be famous. I don't know. Success for each person is personal. And so many people, sadly, they just get up in the morning and do the next thing today. And they, they never plan and they don't know where they're going. And at the end of their life, they wonder what happened. So I'm going to go off script for a second here, Mark, because I believe iron sharpens iron and you have me thinking here this morning. Um, I know your book is nonfiction, obviously, but, you know, obviously you have a, 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 an affinity for writing. Otherwise, you wouldn't have never written the book. What would you say to people who are creative, creatively minded, who are fearful that a regiment of goal setting will somehow... Um, deter or detract or take away from their creative process or, or their creative outcome? Because and I, you're the expert, not me. I still feel even if you're this creative, right-brained person, there still needs to be some structure or your creativity is not going to reach its, its maximum. Can you talk about that for a moment? You know, it's really no different. And, and I get creatives. Creatives sit there and struggle because one, they have so much in their head that they want to accomplish. They don't even know how to start. Two, they're afraid to start because they're afraid of other people will judge them and that they're not good enough. We have to move past all of that. And even creatives need to have goals of where you want to go. Now, for them, it may change a lot because they're always thinking in a different way, people who are more lineal, li, li, lineal, 
I don't know, analytic like me. It's more of that's where I want to go and how do I get there? I'll get there. Um, but it's really the same process. You know, it's kind of like I heard the other day when I think it was uh, what was the what was the movie? Was it Aliens? The creators who wanted to cre who who wanted to film the movie Aliens had no script. They didn't know where they want to go. They just had an idea. And they went into these producers, people who could fund it. And they're like, okay, give us your one sentence on what this movie's about. And they said, it's Jaws in space. Okay. <laughs> they knew where they wanted to go. Sure. And then they created this whole creative process to get there. But, but they still knew where they wanted to go. Let me ask you this, because uh, I thoroughly enjoy the concept of sowing and reaping. And mm -hmm. I feel that is applicable to every area of life if you really want to get down to it. Absolutely. And I know you use multiple agricultural analogies in the success grower. Can you take us through that a little bit from a uh, organic agricultural standpoint? Tell us how that plays into the success grower and goal setting and goal accomplishment. Okay. So just to kind of give you a background in, into the book and all that. It's written as, as an allegory. So it's real easy to read and you learn these eight, um, down, I call them eight down to earth elements for achieving your goals in this book. And it's based on a farm. Well, all of the things that happened in the book happened to me as I grew up and lived on the farm. So I, I came about it honestly, but sowing and reaping, you don't, plant a seed and then immediately have a harvest. It doesn't happen. And today we live in such an instant society. Now, back when I was younger, we called it the microwave society when microwaves came out first, because now you could cook food really quickly. Today, it's an instant society. We have information at our fingertips. We have the world at our fingertips. We have communication, instant communication, which we didn't used to have. And it's caused us to, to think about just our lives differently. We go online and we see what I call unreal lives on social media. People who put the best of their life. Yeah, some people put the worst of their life, but they'll put the best of their life. And you never really see the struggle they went through to get there. You just see the, the harvest at the end. Right. And so to use the ag analogy, you have to prepare the soil and then you plant the seed. Then you have to water and water it and cultivate the soil. And then you end up with a harvest. Well, so let's talk about that in our lives. Preparing the soil. You have to prepare your mind, which is the first element in my book, fertile soil, fertile mind. You have to prepare your mind. You have to know where you're going. You have to believe you can achieve this goal. And you have to study, learn, have all of the knowledge that you need. Not all of it. You have enough knowledge you need, that you need, <clears throat> you need to start. Next is plant the seed. Plant the seed as you take that idea. We all have a dream. We all have a dream of what we want to accomplish, big or small. Some are, some are huge. But even if it's a small dream, you can turn it into something big. We all have an idea of what we want to do in our life. And we're afraid to do it. And so then you have to plant that seed in that fertile mind, in that fertile soil. And then you have to water the seed and cultivate it. That means you've got to go find the resources and bring the resources into your life. You've got to invest in yourself, invest in your new business, invest in growth and knowledge. And then you eventually get to the harvest, which is the success, which is reaping what you want in your life. And I teach people that it's a small process. When you plant a seed in the ground, you don't get immediate harvest. Eventually, you'll see this little shoot, this little stalk pop up out of the ground. Then you'll see a leaf and then another leaf. And as it brings in the sunshine and the nutrients from the air, it starts to grow and you can see it grow faster and faster and bigger and bigger. That's the way it is with our goals that we set in our life. You'll spend some time and you'll go, oh, what is the use? I don't see anything happening, but it's those little bitty steps. If you stop then, 
you won't get to where you want to go. You have to keep going and keep growing and keep nurturing it until you reach what you want. I enjoy this because I'm learning as you're speaking as well. So this is benefiting me as much as anybody else, Mark. I love it. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, but uh, you're the expert and this is why you make the big bucks. So I know uh, you won't have a problem answering this question. Um, <clears throat> what would you say to people who, and let me give you an example. I went through this phase of life where I was really good at drawing up a financial budget. Mm -hmm. It was a great plan. I just had trouble executing <laughs> the budget and bridging the gap between the two. What would you say to someone who they understand the, the essential paramount um, need to set goals um, and they've got that step down, but they're just having the hardest time in the world implementing. Do you have kind of a, can you go into your bag of tricks or seeing what's worked for you or for other people to bridge that gap between just setting goals and accomplishing goals? If you're familiar with Simon Sinek, he really has a great way to talk about it. And he says, start with why. If you don't know why you set that budget, then it's gonna be really hard to follow. If, if you know you struggle with your finances and you've got to get it fixed and, you know, maybe you're in a hole, if your why is strong enough, you then follow the budget. If you set a goal in your life and you don't really have this, you just, you know, I just want to do this. You know, this sounds like a good idea. Start this business or go after this goal or even lose weight. You know, well, I, I'm overweight and I want to lose weight. So I'm set a goal. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Well, that's great. And you can work from that, but until you know your why and that why is strong enough, most people give up. And sometimes your why has to grow. You start with a small why and you start working towards it, but then it really becomes a part of you and the why gets bigger. Once you know your why, then you have to define where you're gonna go. Once you know where you're going, then you can define what you need to do to get there. And after you know what you need to do, then you can plan on how you're going to accomplish that. So that's really the step. It can take, you know, you should start looking 10 years down the road where you want to be. Maybe you can't think that far. So look at five. Maybe you can't think that far. Look at three. And then make a, make a plan, make a goal. Why do I want to be in this place in three years? And then determine what it looks like in one year to get there. So if I work on this goal, where would I be in one year? What does that look like? What does my why look like in one year? And then say six months and then one month. And then you say, what do I have to do today? That one step today to get me to, to the picture I see one month from now so that I can get to that picture six months from now. It's like a house that's on fire. And, you know, maybe you're a fireman and it's your job to go put out this fire and you, you know, you get your stuff together and yeah, you got to get in a hurry and you put on your, your bunker and your hat and your oxygen and all that stuff. And you go in and eventually you put out the fire, but you're not totally engaged because, you know, it's, it's some property and you go put out this fire, it's your job. But what if the house is on fire and your child is in the house? Your why just changed. Right. Your motivation just changed. You'll move heaven and earth and you don't care if you live or die, you're going to get your child out. That's the power of the why. And until your why is strong enough, you'll never do anything in your life. Well, I think this has been a success because my goal was to offer uh, our viewers an appetizer of the success grower. And my goodness, if you've heard and watched this interview, I think you're ready to get it right now. So this has been an absolutely productive uh, appetizer prelude to the success grower. Would you please tell me so that everyone watching and listening can know um, how can people get the success grower if they need to get in touch with you? How do they get in touch with you? Uh, please give us that information, Mark. Well, you can get the book on Amazon or Barnes and Noble online. And for some reason, oddly on Amazon, you kind of have to put in my name to get there because they, they want to stick it with a lot of the gardening books. 
Okay. <laughs> um, so look at my name, put in my name and you'll find it. I have a website. It's called thesuccessgrower.com. Real simple, thesuccessgrower.com. Go there. You can find out more information about the, the coaching and the trainings that I do. And right there at the front, I teach how to set smarter goals, smarter goals. Um, and that's a whole longer discussion about how to set goals the right way. I teach people how to set goals the right way so you will accomplish them instead of what people think of as New Year's resolutions where they end up not. Sure. So you can go there. Um, there's a link right on the very front of that page. You can get a template on how to set smarter goals. And um, you can get that in your email and, and we can head off. You can head off down that road to start setting your goals the right way. Excellent. And if they go to, you know, search in the success grower in Amazon, Mark Schinner, that's M-A-R-K. And then it's S-C-H-I-N-N-E-R-E-R, -E -E Mark Schinner. And Mark, it's been such a good time today. I have grown personally from just these little amount of time we've spent together. So thank you, sir. And yeah. uh, much success to the success grower. <laughs> and Absolutely. I hope Thanks. it continues to lengthen and widen and, and increase in its impact. So I appreciate what you're doing for so many people, Mark. And thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. Sure, you're welcome. Thank you, Tommy. Great. Have a great day, Mark. You too.